Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. In this one we're going to see how we can apply textures to our 3D objects and then we're going to see how we can have different algorithms for the light simulations on these objects using the GGL material and the GGL material editor. I'm also going to show you where you can get those very beautiful textures and a lot more for free and while you are on your way in uh, would be very appreciated if you gently tap the like button and subscribe to the channel. This really helps the channel grow and helps my motivation to go on with these videos and now, without any further ado, let's go on with the lesson. Have fun! Okay, so this is the patch as we left it in the previous lesson. And before we go any further, I have to tell you something. So in these lessons, and in general when doing uh, Jitter programming with uh, OpenGL, we are going to use the GL Core Engine. So GL Core Engine, which is the most recent OpenGL uh, engine in Max. And you can see which OpenGL engine you are using and changing it if you go into Max Preferences. And then there is a preference about the GL engine, the graphics engine. And as you can see, it's set to GL Core. Now, the other engine that we have available is GL2, but this is kind of the legacy engine. This is the old OpenGL engine that doesn't have the latest uh, OpenGL features. So it's kind of the old way of doing things. So if something doesn't look like in my patches, make sure that you're using the right engine. So again, preferences, then graphics engine, and then GL Core. Also, if we go into options and OpenGL status here, there is audio status, but there is also OpenGL status. You will see the OpenGL version that we are using, and you will see what are the capabilities offered by your computers. Great, having saying that, in this lesson, we are going to see how we can bridge the world of uh, videos and the world of 3D shapes. So basically what we're going to do is to attach a video or an image as a texture of a 3D object. So when we talk about textures and 3D objects, we basically mean that we are going to apply an image to a 3D object. We're going to wrap it inside this image. So let's get rid uh, of the follower here. It's kind of annoying. And let's create a JIT movie object. Okay, and we give it the attribute output texture one. So it's going to output a texture as we saw in uh, the previous lessons. And then let's give it also volume zero because we don't want to have any sound from the videos. And then let's give it a movie file. And let's use, for example, chickens.mp4. And we shall see our chicken video appearing right here. There it is. As you can see, this cable is blue, which means that we are outputting a texture. If you over with the mouse over the cable, it will even tell you that this is a texture and will uh, tell you also its name. Okay, great. So one thing we can do is to simply connect this cable to the GGL grid shape. And uh, as you can see, the shape is going to be wrapped inside this video. Now let's make again the dimension of the sphere bigger. So more vertices, so it's smoother. And let's go to 200 by 200. Nice. Now, the first problem that we can see is that the, the video, it became red. And that's because we assigned a reddish color to this 3D shape. If we change the color to something more white, we can see that the video will appear with its proper color. So what's happening here is that the texture color, the color of the pixels in this texture, has been multiplied by the color of the grid shape, okay? So if we will set the color of the shape to black, would mean that we are multiplying the pixels of the video by zero, which makes it then uh, completely black. Now we can choose other colors and we basically will multiply the video input by whatever color we choose. If we want to be sure that we actually have a white color for our grid shape, we can change the color attribute to simply 1, 1, 1, and 1 for the alpha, which means 1 for the red channel, 1 for the green, 1 for the blue, and 1 for the alpha channel, right? So now we can see that the video is applied correctly. Um, let's change shape. So last lesson we say that the GGI grid shape has a shape attribute which means we have a bunch of shape to choose from. This one is a torus, which is like a donut. Then we have the cylinder, which looks like a cylinder. And then we have the cube. Then we have the plane. And as you can see, the light that is applied to our 3D shape is still applied to the, to the 3D shape, even when the texture is on the shape, right? So if we orient, let's go back to the cube. So if you orient this shape in a different weight, the light will interact with the shape and uh, make it darker where the light is not supposed to be. And this also will affect the video. If we don't want the lighting to affect the video, what we do is to simply set lighting enable to zero. So we can check the lighting enable attribute and set it to zero, right? In this way, the light will not affect the color of the shape. Let's go back to lighting enable on. 
we can still use the poly mode, uh, for example, poly mode 1, 1, so which give us the wireframe, which I use poly mode 2, which makes the shape represented as points, make the point size bigger. So this stuff still works. Let's go back to poly mode 0. Now, let me show you another way of applying a texture to a 3D object. So let's disconnect this cable. And as you can see, even if the cable is disconnected, the texture is still applied to the shape. The video is still playing in the shape. And that's because the texture attribute of GGL grid shape hasn't changed. Still has the name of this texture as its texture value. As you can see, this is the same name. So in order to get rid of this texture, we should set it to something like known or whatever, we can just delete the name of the texture and then the texture will just not be applied anymore because now it doesn't know which texture it should use. So in this way, we can simply set the texture of um, a 3D object by simply using the name of the texture. So let's go here and reset the texture value here. And as you can see, now it's using that texture. And we could also hard code it inside the object, right? We can say texture and then copy the name of this texture and it will use that texture. Now, the problem with this approach is that if we delete the JIT movie or if we close the patch and then we recreate it, the new texture will have a different name. So now the texture that we are coded inside the object uh, doesn't work anymore because it was a different texture. We were referring to a different address in the GPU memory. So in order to fix that, we can explicitly set a name for this texture. So let's create a GGL texture object and let's give it a name attribute. And let's set it to something like my texture. Now this explicitly set name will not change because it will always be that specific name, always be assigned to my texture. So now if we add code name my texture here, you will see that it will use uh, the correct texture. And even if we delete both these objects, the JITMovie and the texture and recreate it, the texture will have now always the same name that we chose, which is my texture. That's why it's called the hard coding because it's kind of uh, written in stone. It cannot change between different iterations of the program. Okay, so this was the texturing part of this lesson. Let's now go into the shading part. And let's maybe get rid of a bunch of these add three objects here. You can always get them from the previous uh, video download uh, on my pattern page. And let's create an object which is called GGL material. And let's connect it to our grid shape. Good. So as you can see, once we connect the GGL material to the GGL grid shape, the texture disappeared. And also the light interacting with the shape looks now different. So even if we will now delete the lighting enable and the smooth shading attribute from the shape, uh, we can see that the lighting will be still applied to the shape. Okay, and that's because the GGL material now takes care of deciding how the shape looks. So this takes care of the wall shading. So first let's define what shading is. So shading is simply the process of changing the appearance of a 3D object, simulating some light in the scene. That's all what shading is. Now, this digital material has a great help file, which I encourage you to check out, but I'm going to introduce you now to some of its main features. So for example, let's now say that we still want to use a texture for our shape. Let's get rid of this texture attribute here. This is not useful to us anymore. And what we need to do is to pass a texture to the GGL material and in fact in its first inlet. So I've got here an image that we can use to represent our shape as a wall of bricks. And I will tell you in a second where I got it. First, let's use it. So let's create another GGL texture object. Let's go back to my folder and I will just drag and drop this image inside this texture, right? So now this texture contains that image. Let's see it through a GTP window object. And there we go. Now, as you can see, the sphere has been textured uh, using that image. And this looks pretty cool. Now the GGL material is also a bunch of other inputs, right? The second one is called specular, the third one is called ambient, then we have emission, then we have normals, then we have environment, height map, and gloss map. The only other input that we're going to use though is the normals input. So let's create another GGL texture, just copy the, that one and connect it to the normals input. I will get back to my 
folder and there is an image here in this folder which is called PNG normal GL. There are actually two images, one is called normal DX and this is a normal image that is optimized for DirectX. What we want to use is the one optimized for OpenGL which is called normal GL. So we'll just drag it and drop it inside this texture. Then I will just click here and as you can see now, this shape now looks super realistic. Let's change shape and see how the others look like. For example, the torus looks pretty great. Cylinder, cube, nice. Let's go back one second to the cylinder. Um, the cylinder, the top face of the cylinder, as you can see, is not using that image, right? That's because the shape on the top face, as you can see, if we go with poly mode one, has only one vertex, right? And textures, in order to be applied correctly to an object, need to have texture coordinates for each vertex. And if there is only one vertex, there is only one texture coordinate, so this will not work. But we're going to talk about all that in the next video. What I want to focus now is about how the light is interacting with the shape. And we can change that behavior from the GGL material by double clicking on it and you will see that appears the GGL material editor. Now from the editor, we can change the algorithm used for the shading. So how the light is interacting with the shape. So we got the diffuse model, which is the algorithm that is responsible for the color of the whole shape and by default is Lambert. And then we get the specular model, which is the algorithm responsible for these highlights. And the highlight is the reflected light. So in order to better illustrate that, let me actually go here, delete the GGL material and recreate it, and uh, go back into the editor, and let me show you. This white circle, this is a specular highlight. This represents where the light is mostly perpendicular with the shape. But we're going to see in detail the theory behind all that in the next video, so don't fret too much about it right now. Just know that you have several algorithms that you can choose to decide how these specular highlights look on the shape. So for example, we have Blin, Fong, which is a bit more focused. And then we have the shininess attribute, which decides how big are the specular highlights. So a material that is less reflective, for example, will have a low level of shininess, while a material that is more reflective will have a higher level of shininess. Then we have Toon, which looks more like a cartoonish. Then we have Word. Cook tolerance, and that's it. So a bunch of different algorithms. For the diffuse model, we have Lambert or an AIR, which is best suit for like rough materials. Then we have the Tune again for a cartoonish, and then we have Minaert, which kind of darkens the object itself, so it is more adapt for like velvety materials or powdery materials. And all these options, we can actually set them as a, our tribute for the GGL materials. So for example, we can choose the diffuse model, we can set Lambert, and then we can choose the specular model to something like Fong, right? So we can experiment with them from the editor, but then we can set them. And then we are, when we are satisfied, we can hard code them as attribute inside the GGL material. So let's go back, set this texture back in the GGL material. Great, so we could have a bunch of shapes using the same material. For example, we can copy this shape. We can set it one unit on the left of our previous shape. Then we can give it a different shape. We can hard code, for example, the shape as a cube. And then we can connect it to the same material. And as you can see, they will use the same material. We can create another GGL handle and connect it to this grid shape. And there you go. We have two shapes that use the same material. If we will change the texture of this material, for example, we could use the chickens. And as you can see, it is still looks like a mixture of the wall and the chickens. And uh, why is that? Uh, we will discover it in the next video. But yeah, you can also do these sort of tricks. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is where I got these textures. So if you go on my website, federicofoderaro.com, and you go into Amazing Mac stuff, and you go into Knowledge Pot, and this is where I gather all the resources online or offline that I find useful. On the bottom, there is web resources, so assets. And the first one that's written free texture for PBR materials. And that's where you click. And then you can get some very cool looking textures. So you can choose whichever of those you want. And in future videos, we're going to see how we can use the GGL PBR object instead of the material object for having even better results using those textures. 
So if you click on one of those, they're completely free and the license allows you to use them even for commercial projects. So that's awesome. And the bigger the file you're going to download, the better the quality is gonna be. So this depends on how much space you have on your hard drive and also how much memory you have on your GPU. So the bigger the file, the more memory is going to be occupied in the GPU. Uh, the smaller, the less memory, but the less quality. So that's where you need to go. I will include also the link in the description. If you go back in my website, there is another one which is called Poly Heaven, uh, which kind of serves the same purpose. So there you go. So this was it. Thank you very much for following. In the next video, we're going to check a bit more of the theory behind all of this. Um, if you want to grab this patch, just download it for free from my Patreon. And once you are there, it will be awesome if you will uh, become a supporter. This gives you access to hundreds of uh, very cool patches and also to my Discord community. So have fun with this stuff and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Ciao.